Welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk. Here are your hosts, Oswin and Lord Knight. So today's topic is stages of grief. All right. So we're going to be approaching this from a priest or priestess point of view. Right. And helping people and watching other people go through this. I know that sounds might sound a little weird, but the question is, is how do you handle this? Right. You know, when a member of your temple has someone that's passed away, you have to help them get through this. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's it's part of the process. Right. So, I, I, again, I think it's something that all priests and priestesses should generally know. Maybe not be able to recite it line for line. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, you, you know what I mean? But, yeah. yeah. So, I, I like to do an overview on this. All right. So what's our first stage? Well, the uh, first stage of grief is denial. Uh, well, again, this is a very hard part of this, uh, having to have helped a couple of people through it. Mm -hmm. It is hard for them to sit there and look at people and go, and, well, are you sure? Are you sure they're dead? Are you sure? There's always a question. Right. Did you make a mistake? Normally that resolves itself when people see the body. A lot of there's times, too, a lot of times, yeah. Right, right. There's, there's not a lot for us to do as priests and priestesses on this, all right? Because the denial thing normally happens within the first little bit because we normally don't get called until after they finally accept that these people are dead. Well, I think it goes a little beyond that, too. Because there's, you know, there's a whole thing of not really talking about your loss. Right. And even when you do, it's a whole thing of acting like everything's okay, like nothing has really happened. And, well, I mean, you know, and trying to, I think it also goes into things like busying yourself with whatever else so you don't have to confront those feelings. I, true. I mean, you, you have to get people to accept it. Like I said, normally this happens within the first little bit when it first happens. Right. Normally your priest or your pastor and stuff like that, they might get called when the end is starting to get near, if they're at hospice or something like that. Right. All right. But there's a difference between someone having a car wreck and suddenly dying. True. Compared to a long... Because there, there is a difference between... The emotional connection people have with someone who's been long term sick versus someone who just suddenly dies. That there, there is a big difference, yes. Right. If it's someone that's been on, like, you know, that's got cancer or something that's been in hospice for a while, you have time to, the individuals normally have time to deal with that through that process. Right. So, again, the, the idea that these people are going to die that are long term is they sort of skip that. Like when my mother passed away from cancer, there was no denial about it. We already knew it was going to happen. It was just a question of when. Right. You know, unlike the car wreck or the sudden heart attack and you get those phone calls where, are you sure it's them? Are you positive? Right. You know, oh, no, 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 no. It, 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 they couldn't have been in a wreck. Or, that wasn't their car. No. It was, it, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is that denial that you know we will get swept up into right you sort of got to hold the person's hand until they accept it but the majority of the time seeing the body itself helps resolve that there's not a lot we have to do psychologically right so once confirmation is made that that stage is over to me i i, I could be wrong but I doubt too many people are going to argue with there's the body. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, so then we have to move to the next stage, which is anger. Now, this is a little bit more difficult. First of all, women show anger in a different way than men do. Yes. All right. Well, both of them might wind up punching you in the arm repeatedly. <laughs> it's just, it's just when the guy does it, you need to be a little bit more on guard. Right. <laughs> you know, normally when the when and I don't mean this bad when women do it, they're doing that 
beating the chest real fast, short. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like almost like that tincture tantrum no. kind of thing. Unlike a guy who might just turn around and punch you in the face. Right. <laughs> well, and I, I think it also doesn't necessarily manifest as a physical anger. No. No, I, I'm just saying there, you in that situation as the outsider trying to comfort the family, you might want to keep your guard up. Well, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, you are dealing with anger, so it, it could yeah, very de- well manifest in that manner. So, Right, plus you got family members and, you know, everybody has that family member that nobody likes and irritates everybody. Right. And you have to be on top of this because, again, Emotions are already running hot. Please pay attention. <laughs> exactly, yes. All right. Keep on reminding people, especially if they're pagan, sit down. Take a minute. Center yourself. Center and ground yourself. Don't tell them to meditate. That ain't going to help a damn thing. Mm-mm. No, not in this but case. Sitting there, but sitting there, telling them to go outside and sit down in a chair away from everybody, take some deep breaths, regather your thoughts, and come back is a whole lot more helpful. Right. All right, because again, they're going to cuss you out. They're going to be mad at you. Well, I, because you're 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 their spiritual leader. They want to know. They want reasons. They well, want answers. Yeah, they want reasons. But you got to also got to keep in mind that that anger could be at themselves. They yes. could feel like they're at fault for their loved one passing away. They could be mad at doctors. They could be mad at first responders. They could be mad at anybody. What they so could, you got to keep could that be in mind. Ma- they could even be mad of the lack of attention they gave the situation. Right. Because, again, I- I've seen it happen. We've both worked at hospitals where grandma goes in for a hip replacement and then all of a sudden passes away. Right. Because there's always a risk of surgery. Now, this is where I see a lot of people get angry, where it's up in the air, the reason why. So some people, you might be walking into a situation where some people might feel like they're justified being angry because they think the hospital or somebody else did something wrong. Right. So again, this is something we need to be, you know, you need to be aware of and watch out for. And people will attack other people out of grief. Out of loss. Right. Well, yeah, and that's something that I was going to say, too, is that, um, you know, it could very well just be a, um, it could be an anger towards just the average person, people they don't even know. Well, I mean, I've seen a lot of people, and they'll get angry with the gods. How dare they do this to me? (laughs) Oh, sure. Well, I mean, when, when my dad passed away, my anger was first towards the gods and then my anger was towards my dad and then my anger was towards myself so i went through several stages of anger within this one stage well so i think one of the anger points there is some people feel ashamed because they weren't there right they didn't they might not necessarily have helped out as much as they could have again it's something to be aware of Yes, you need to put on your duck suit Mm -hmm. because, again, warning priests and priestesses. Yes, people might try to hit you. People might cuss you out and all this other stuff. Again, you cannot take it personally. No. Because it's really not against you. You just happen to be the person there that they need you to be. Right. (laughs) You just (laughs) happen to be. I was going to say, you just might happen to be the punching bag in the room at the time, you know. (laughs) It happens. Once we can get them past the anger part or whatever issues that they have with this, we get to move into yet the next one, which is bargaining. It never stops. And sometimes I think it's worse with witches. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of witches over the years. They'll 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 cast them circles in the whole nine yards and sit there and try to bargain with the gods to fix or to change this outcome. Right. And unfortunately, when when our time's up, our time's up. There's no way to always fix it. Some people might think that 
bargaining is something that happens before death, but not necessarily. No. Bargaining, you know, bargaining is not just, you know, well, if, if I can recover from this situation, I promise I'll never do this again or well, whatever. Some, some of that bargaining is if you bring them back. Yeah, some of the bargaining is, yes. People, some people are sitting there and they're asking for things that uh, a lot of us know aren't ever going to happen. Right. But I think it also goes into if only. Right. You know, when people say, you know, if only we had gone to a different hospital, you know, they would have gotten better care. Or if only we'd done a different treatment or. Right. Yeah. But, it, but I hate to be this way. That also goes, well, you know, maybe if you were a little bit more healthy or maybe if you ate better, maybe if you didn't do this, maybe. Right. It, it becomes a long list but, of things. But again, the, the if only. <laughs> <laughs> that that turns into like an infinity stone because it just keeps going and going and going if you don't it never stops right if you don't get a handle on it no, no so you, you just can have lose to be yourself careful. to that yeah right. you really can you know and again helping people to remind them no uh, we have cycles right you know uh, yeah it's hard to sit there and when you see one of your coven members sitting there crying and all upset and you, they're doing this bargaining and you know, it's not going to work. And you're like, you have to accept it. We all have to stop at some point. Right. The cycle of, you know, birth, death and rebirth has to happen. And no, it's not always comforting to people. It's not. And that's, and that's you know, the hard part. And, and, and I hate to be this way, just to warn people, I've seen people do this and I could be wrong, but some people tend to slide backwards on that scale just because they're moving forward a little bit. Don't mean that they might not suddenly jump back to the bargaining or the anger right? in that. Because I, I think sometimes as this process goes, people will have a new anger each day, something else they thought of, something else they thought they could have done. Right. And it continues on forever. And then, then you also have those people sitting there going, well, now there's another angel in heaven or, you know, that was God. <laughs> some people don't want to hear that. No, some people don't. You know, sometimes you, you, you have to sort of go with the flow of the individual. <laughs> We've had somebody in temple. They lost a uh, child was stillborn. Mm-hmm. And literally, she she got to the point to where in the world she's like, okay, no, I, if I hear it one more time, if I hear somebody else, like, oh, it was God's plan, don't worry about it, you'll be fine, and, and, and just think they're in a better place. She's like, I don't want to think about that. A better place would be in my arms. Right. You have to let people do that. Sometimes you might even have to go in there and be the heavy and tell everybody else to get the hell out of there and let the person be. Yeah, you just might have to do that. So the next one up is depression. Now, this one is the one that can really bother people. Yeah. This, this is the one we have to keep our eye on. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Depression, as someone who has suffered with depression and dealing with depression with my mom as well, it can get really difficult at times. You know, you can you can lose all hope. You know, that's that's very easy to do. I mean, it, it, it's got to be the, one of the harder emotions to deal with, because, it, again, you also got to remember, as a priest or a priestess, this isn't happening like 15 seconds. No. This could be a process that you could be going through with your coven members for months on end. Easily. Trying easily trying to get them to slowly get there so again uh, this is one of the ones where you know it is it, best to keep an eye i guess and ask people and, and and keep on asking the person invite them over for dinner make sure everybody else in the coven are inviting them and doing things and trying to keep them busy by the time you get to this stage i think it's a little bit easier to get them to go out sometimes right 
You know, this is the time I'd say, okay, if you're a priest or a priestess, you might want to start bullying them a little bit to try to get them out, to try to get them out of the bed. <laughs> right. And I mean, I'm not saying it mean, but you've got to like, okay, it's time to come up. Your breath stinks. Right. You got to take a bath. You stink. <laughs> it's like, come on. Do so, you realize what you're doing to yourself? I mean, you're not doing this to be mean. You're doing this to try to get them up and motivated. Right. Try to get them out and start dealing with people in life. Absolutely. Because again, sitting at the house or laying in bed is not going to solve the problem. Well, no. And a lot of times, you know, people don't realize, but any type of depression, but especially grief related depression, you can start getting physical symptoms of other yes. illnesses. You get aches and pains to you. It'll change your sleep patterns. You I, know, I mean, and, well, I was going to say, I've heard stories about being hypnotized and people being told that they were burned and whelps actually burnt showing up on their arms. Yes. So again, it, it, with depression, yeah, you can have psychological problems that manifest as physical problems because of the psychological problem. Well, and and then too, it can. I, I, know, that that's, right. I know that's confusing to say, but it, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you said it right because uh, I don't know. That I took can, way too much. I, I'm done. That took my, too much brain power. <laughs> But I was going to say, it can also lead into, if you have existing health problems, it could worsen those issues, and it could right. even lead to new ones. So it is, it is something, it is very serious. You do need to keep an eye on it. Just keep in touch with your folks, you know? Right. I mean, don't leave them just completely hanging, but... <laughs> well, no. No, you need, you need to be there for them. So then we have our last one, which is... The last one is acceptance. Even when they do accept it and they've come to that place of peace, it, it ain't done and over with. No, it's not. The small things can set people back easily. And it needs to be aware you still need to keep up and communicating as much as possible with these people. Well, and you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like it could be a song on the radio. It could be right. the smell of a certain flower. I'm a bad joke. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> and and it doesn't have to be a complete setback, but it, it will be one of those things where you will notice the person withdrawing a little bit or they might tear up or, you know, could be little things like that. Just, again, you got to keep an eye on your folks slow progressive i mean don't get me wrong there are there are some advantages on depending on the age of the person that passed away mm -hmm. newborns are a little bit harder if they're still born because there's not a lot of memories there to pull from happier memories to pull from right besides you found out your sonograms and all this other stuff mm -hmm. you know unlike you know someone who was 25 or something where you have a plethora of funny stories and jokes and stuff that this person did. And you, right. you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. When there's an, when there's actually a history there, it's a little bit easier to pull people out versus someone who's really young. Right. All right. So when kids die and stuff like this, it's a little bit harder. It's going to be a little bit harder for you as a priest or a priestess because there's not a history to pull from to help people get into a, happier mood or to tell happier stories about the person just to remind them that the person's still with them. Right. So again, this is something you got to take into account when you're talking to these people, because again, like, like we've been saying, you're never quite sure what's going to set people off, what someone needs to hear versus what they don't need to hear. Right. You know, because again, not hearing things is just as important as hearing the right thing. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you're going to have to, yeah, you're going to do your normal stuff and encourage them. Yeah, you need to do your meditations. It will help over time. Be patient with it and do it a little bit at a time. If you can get them to the point to where they finally can meditate and given enough time to get over their grief, mm -hmm. you can even start to suggest to them, start to meditate on that person, try to create a psychic connection. So they can still talk to the person that has crossed over. Right. 
you know, and again, explain to them, sometimes if you're going to do this, it might take the other person time to adjust over there before they can communicate with you. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, there's an adjustment period for them as well. Right. I mean, for them, they're moving on to a new life. Uh, to a certain extent, you could think about it this way. They've just been born into a new life. <laughs> right. <laughs> to a certain extent. Anything else you want? You think um, you well, it's, well, yeah. Um, like, how long does grief usually last? Depends on the person. And the and and believe it or not, even the connection to the person, you know, and how that relationship was. Okay. Older relationships may be easier to get over in the long term. Mm -hmm. It can also be harder in the short term because again, the close connection between. So when you got someone a couple that's been married and one passes off and the other one's still there. Yes. You got a lot of memories to pull through and all this, but some people do die of a broken heart. Right. It does happen. You know, people will sometimes just give up and pass away. And especially if they're older. Right. So again, it's these people, when people pass away, yeah, if they're older members of your coven, you, you might want to go by and see them on a more regular basis than, especially when it first starts and you work your way up. Right. From there. And it's really hard to tell you what to do and what not to do because each person is so different in this subject. Right. Well, and I think that there's also two two different types of grief. I think that there's one that's more like normal grief that would be like the five stages. But I think that one's a little easier to, to overcome and to get through. And then there's, right. and then there's one that's a little more complicated where it's like, it's, it's so intense that it's going to last for a longer period of time. And, you know, it may even be debilitating to people. Well, I've, I've seen people get into this and trying to keep everybody on the right track. I like worked with this woman for years and her son passed away and she still, as far as I know, to this day has not ever got over it. That's it. Yeah. That's you know, exactly what I'm talking about. That's it's right. that intense grief that people just cannot move through. Well, and, and again, you, you have this, you have this type of thing, especially when you're dealing with parents who have lost kids mm. versus kids who have lost their parents. Well, yeah, because it, yeah, it's that whole adage that parents shouldn't be burying their children. No, and it, and it is much harder on the parent in which, you know, even though my mom was a full adult for many years. <laughs> right. You know, my her mom passed away, then she passed away. And it was very shortly after that my grandfather just passed away. And we, we really just think he died of a lonely heart because he done buried his wife and his oldest daughter. Right. Even though he's got three other kids, but that's still a hard pill for some people to swallow. Well, sure. And, you know, and that's one thing about the older generations as well. Once something like that happens, they're left alone. Right. And so there's, there's an extra stage, I think, that they have to go through, and that's the whole getting adjusted to being by themselves again. You know, the only thing I can tell priests and priestesses when dealing with this, be patient, take your time, and listen to them. You, you, you rarely have to say or do anything. You let them talk. You let them cry. You, you are literally there as a punchy bag. If they're angry, you would rather them get angry at you than their families and other people that they actually need because you need to understand what in the world these people are going through. Right. And I've seen a lot of priests and priestesses go out and do this and start taking this stuff more personally when they should. No, oh, no, you can't do that. No. All right. This you cannot do. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, one thing about being, you know, pagan is we have priestesses. So you can kind of tag team if you need a break. 
Right. There's nothing wrong with you taking that break, going outside of the room, sitting down, centering, grounding yourself, and doing a little bit of meditation, then go back into the room and continue to deal with. I want to make sure that priests and priestesses understand this is just as much stressful on us as it is them. (laughs) For sure. All right. We have to take care of our own mental and emotional health in this process, too. Well, yeah, because, I mean, if you I've heard it said before in various ways, if you can't take care of yourself. How are you going to take care of somebody else? What is that? If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? You're going to love somebody else. (laughs) Can I get an amen up in here? Thank you, RuPaul. Hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I know it's a sad subject, but it's a subject I think people in the pagan community, priests and priestesses, we need to talk about. We need to find ways and helpful ways to support each other as we support our heaven members going through this right well and i gotta take care of yourself on that (laughs) you do and i and i think the biggest thing is being able to talk about it if you're counseling someone who's going through grief the i think the important thing is to get them to talk about it the more they talk about it the better understanding they can have about what it is they're experiencing and again i'm back to you Normally, you don't have to say anything. No. You can ask, you can sit there and ask questions. Well, what were they like this? And just to keep them going. Right. You're right. The more you can get them to talk, the more you can get them to think about what they're saying and what in the world they're going through, the faster they're going to work through it. Yes. What you need to pay attention is for when they get that quiet, stared off into the sunset, when they're Mm -hmm. not actually thinking about things. Mm -hmm. And they're just wallowing in that emotion. It's okay to take a break. Like you said, it's okay for everybody, even those experiencing the grief. It's okay for them to take a break. But just don't let it get to the point where they're spiraling into something deeper and darker into that place where it's there's no point of return. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are going to be times where, yeah, you're just going to be sitting in a chair on a couch and having this person curl up into the side of you and just cry. Mm -hmm. And there ain't nothing you can do. All you can do is just sit there and hold be there for them. Right. Be there for them. That's it. That's it. And it sounds mean. It might sound mean when I'm saying that. You really ain't got to do much, but be there. Right. I mean, understanding and helping them and guiding them as best you can through this process. And and like I said, you still have to take care of yourself. Yeah, you do. You have to take care of yourself. But that's exactly where I was leading with this. Sometimes you have to take a break and you need to go talk to somebody as well. Yes. Because you're taking on a lot. You know, getting people, I I can sit here and give you strategies and stuff. It's in hospital rooms or if you can get them outside of the house and walking around and Mm -hmm. it it helps to have people out in nature and stuff like that. If you can, if it's cold and raining, no, you're not going to be able to do that. But (laughs) you, you sort of have to think of other ways to try to get these people to think, to engage with other people around there right because Um, like you said it could be as simple as going for a walk get them out of the house go go get something to eat get them to talk to other family members to get them to understand you're not the only one right you know you have family members they're going through the same pain if you stand with them they'll help you just as much and you'll help them so again it's more of a guide then you actually, I don't want to say it like we're not doing anything at all, but you don't. <laughs> right. I mean, you are, but you're not. Right. I, I don't know how else to put that. So, but because you are there, you, you, you do need, and trust me, you'd be surprised at how fast people remember. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, who, who was there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many times have, I know there's been a lot of times that I've said to people 
you know, when they say, well, I wish I could have done more for you. Um, well, you know what? You were there. That's it. That in and of itself was huge. And I've had people say the same thing to me. You know, <laughs> sometimes that's all it is. You just, you just being there. Right. You know, I, I, letting I them know in, somebody cares. A kind word goes a long way in this. Right. <laughs> goes a long way. I mean, so I think that's about it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Peg and Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, a maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our day, so walk with me till morning breaks.